This is Andrew Kamazinski at Hokkaido University of Education, Asahikawa. And this is a flip for the class Critical Thinking, Ipon Egol san. And today we are going to look at generalizations more. We're going to review the rules we looked at last time, and we're going to look at a couple more rules. So I don't know what time you're watching this, but I hope that you enjoy it. Okay, this is dealing with generalizations too. So a generalization is something where we're taking a small amount of data and using that to say something about a larger set or group. So last week, we looked at three rules for generalizations. And I described generalizations as being either strong or weak. Now, we say a generalization is We say a generalization is weak if the generalization has little support or little reason that we would think the generalization is correct. Now, we saw very simple rules that can help us when dealing with generalizations last week. Generalizations don't just use a single data point. Instead, use multiple data points. So if we have say something here, and we have only a single data point, it seems like it's a very bad idea to make a claim about all of this, because we have only one thing. The second rule is to use representative samples. So what that means is when we're picking what we're going to look at, pick something that fits. So let's say we want to talk about Japan. These are four islands for the main ones. Now, Tokyo goes all the way down here to a little tiny island. If we said people here hate living in Tokyo, Tokyo is also here. And there's very few people here in this small area. So we shouldn't use that to talk about the larger area. The third rule that we looked at last week was to look at the background rate. So before we assume that there is meaning to what we're talking about, we need to know if it is different. So let's say you want to know if that special boy or girl is interested in you. If you're looking to see whether they smile, that doesn't mean anything if everyone smiles at you. So things only have meaning either if they match the background or if they don't. So if we're trying to figure out something like, do I like vanilla ice cream, then you should use as many samples as possible. Ice cream, let's say that you have this test. So up here is yes. And down here is no. So if you like vanilla ice cream one time, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times, nine times, ten times, and you dislike it once, before letting this one no tell you that you do not like vanilla ice cream, please look at the background rate. And the background rate is these ten yeses. On the other hand, if we want to know about the ice cream you ate, then we could say that these 10 times, the ice cream is fine. And this time, the ice cream is rotten. So if our claim is, do I like ice cream, look over here. If our claim is, was the ice cream rate okay, look over here. So I'll just repeat that. So if we're trying to make a claim about whether I like ice cream, and we have one exception, look at the background to know that is not meaningful. On the other hand, if I want to know if the ice cream I'm eating now is okay, then if there's one time it is rotten, that time is probably not okay 
because it differs from the background. So if you need more information, please look at the previous flip, flip number three. So read generalizations carefully. Our textbook says statistics need a critical eye. Now, as we learned in class, critical in this context means thinking about thinking. So we can simplify this English to think when you read statistics. Or we can just say it even more generally, read generalizations carefully. So we want to pay attention to what we are hearing in generalizations we see. So look at the following sentence. Most people like many kinds of fruit. So we'll see the sentence again on the next slide. So most people like many kinds of fruit. So I want to ask us, could we say, based on this, most people like apples? Uh, maybe we could. So if people like many kinds of fruit, then maybe they will like apples. Most people like oranges, same as the first argument. Most people like apples and oranges. Yeah, maybe we can say these. So what we want to pay attention to here is that we have this most people, and we're following it with most people. We have a many. So we're saying they like one kind, they like one kind, they like two kinds. So this is not too unrealistic for someone to be saying. But maybe we could ask, will apples always be one of the kinds they like? So many kinds does not mean the same thing as every kind. So just be a little bit careful. But let's look at some more that are harder to say. OK, consider the following sentence again. Most people like many kinds of fruit. Most people like only apples. Can we say this? So I don't think so. So we have most people, and we have most people. And we have many versus only. So these two don't match, so we shouldn't say that. Someone likes only strawberries. This might be true. But this has no connection with the first claim. So the first claim says most, whereas now we're saying someone. And again, for the third one, we're saying someone. So both of these could be possible. But maybe they're not things that we should say on the basis of this sentence up above. So this sentence doesn't connect with these two claims. What about the following sentence? Most people in Asahikawa can speak Japanese. Now, based on this sentence, could we say everyone in Asahikawa speaks Japanese? So the answer is no. For one easy reason, if our data just says most, everyone is more than most. So we're trying to say something too big from our data. Most people at Hokkaido University of Asahikawa, most people at Hokkaido University of Education at Asahikawa speak Japanese. Now, in this case, I think we could say that because the size most is most, agree? And Hokkaido University of Education Asahikawa is smaller than Asahikawa. What about someone at Hokkaido University of Education speaks Japanese? So we can definitely say this. Why? Again, most in this case is bigger than someone. Someone is at least one person. Most is usually several people. And again, Hokkaido University of Education, Asahikawa, is smaller than Asahikawa. And finally, someone at Hokkaido University of Education, Asahikawa, probably speaks Japanese. We can definitely say this. And it's a very easy claim to say. So I want to show you a basic pattern that you can use when you think about this type of problem. 
But first, we'll do a couple more examples. So most people in Asahikawa can speak Japanese. So what about everyone in America speaks Japanese? So the correct answer is no, we can't say that. For two reasons. One, everyone is bigger than most. And two, Asahikawa is not connected to America. What about the second claim? No one at Hokkaido University of Education, Asahikawa, speaks English. Now, again, we cannot say this. There are three reasons why. First, most and no one don't agree. But more importantly, English and Japanese are different questions. And they're not connected. What about this third claim? Someone at Hokkaido University of Education, Asahikawa, probably speaks Japanese. This we can say. Why? Because again, most is going down to someone. And we're saying probably. So probably is a smaller claim. So we can summarize this by having certain patterns, certain things to look for in generalizations. First, are we saying things that are too extreme, like all, none, no, every, must, cannot, in our conclusion? If we're doing that from a generalization, we're probably speaking too strongly. So for instance, salmon go back to the same river. So in Hokkaido, that's going to be the Ishikari River or the Chitose River, or a couple of smaller ones. But not every salmon makes it back to the exact same river. So according to my friend who's a salmon researcher, about one in 10 may try a different river or tributary or just go somewhere else. Second, are we saying something stronger or weaker? Changing words like many, most, some, probably, might. So if our data says everyone in the class can speak Japanese, then if we want to say at least one person in the class can speak Japanese, that's easy to say. If our data says one person in the class speaks English well, it's a lot harder to then say everyone in the class speaks English well. So another way to talk about this is also areas. So if we're changing the area, the honey that we're applying to our problem, this can also cause problems. So if we say something about, let's see, Japan, and we then talk about France, we're going to need some reason to believe the situation is at all similar in France to Japan. Or if we talk about the United States, if we then want to talk about Canada, we need a reason to think these two things are similar, or else it makes no sense to talk about one using the other. So to simplify, please look for these sorts of words these sort of extreme words, things that are at the kiwami of what they shouldn't be or should be. Also, look at whether what you're saying is stronger or weaker. So if you're starting from most, and you want to look at some, then it seems like it is OK to go this way. But it is not OK to go from some to most. Or similarly, it is OK to go from many to few, but not from few to many. So let's move on to the next rule. So 
I want to remind you, generalizations are strong or weak. This means generalizations can always be wrong because they work by drawing a conclusion based on data. So that means if there's anything that disagrees that we actually find, it can break our generalization. The bigger the claim, the easier it is for it to be wrong. So no American can speak Japanese. So this claim is false. There are many Americans who can speak Japanese in places like Hawaii or California. Another one. No Japanese student is taller than Dr. K. Here at Hokkaido University of Education, Asahikawa, I know at least three Japanese students who are taller than me. So again, these sort of universal claims are often wrong. And if we can find an example, then it will be wrong. All white people speak English. So we'll begin with our easy one. What about, let's say, people who are French? Can all of them speak English or Russian? Another example, if we say all Chinese people prefer rice over bread, this is not true. Different parts of China prefer different foods and different people in China prefer different foods. So if we can find one Chinese person who prefers bread over rice, then we can say this is wrong. So this is very general. So let's look at a couple more specific ones. So first, let's just get clear. This is a counterexample, an example that shows a generalization is false. For example, a black swan shows that not all swans are white. So I've mentioned it before in class, but in Australia, they have black swans. For hundreds of years, people believed all swans were white, but this is not true. Similarly, Dr. K does not accept absence slips. So the keiseki todoke, except for kyoiku field kenkyu, for student teaching and other school-sponsored reasons. So these are counter examples, examples that show the claim is not completely true. So let's talk about Asahikawa. It's getting colder here. Maybe it will snow today. Maybe it is already snowing today. If I say it snows every day in Asahikawa, this is a generalization. And I'm saying every day. So again, if we can find a single day it isn't snowing, this is a problem. So if we say it snows in Asahikawa every day, then this is too strong of a claim. If we can find one day where it does not snow, this is a counterexample that shows this claim is wrong. Let's look at another one. So these are our friends blue and red. Let's say I said this, every point is blue. For some reason, I decide to tell you every single point is blue. So there's a lot of points that are blue. But then there's this. So this conclusion is false because of this counterexample. So these counterexamples show that there is red. What about this? Most points are blue. This is fine. So one way to deal with counterexamples is to be careful when you make your claims. Basic rules. When you're looking at an argument, think if there is an exception. So before making the claim or before accepting the claim, think are there ways this claim could be wrong? When making your own argument, be careful about how you use these sort of modifiers. Be careful when you say all, none, no, most, every, few, many, probably. Be careful to make claims that are weak enough for you to prove. Okay, so I hope that there were some things that were helpful in this week's flip. 
If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please feel free to comment on the YouTube video or to email me. I want this to be useful for you. If I'm speaking too fast, tell me. If there are not enough examples, tell me. If it's too easy, please tell me. Anyway, I hope that you have a good day, and I will see you in class soon.